process chart is another important tool for process analysis. This tool also allows us to document the steps involved in a process, but unlike the process flowchart, it is not a pictorial representation. Rather, here we list all the steps in a table as shown. Let us say I'm conducting a process of serving coffee to customers. This is a process that is repeated for each customer. I am going to make a list of all the activities involved in each iteration. I could use different versions of this chart to track different things, such as the employee, the customer, materials, etc. I need to specify clearly what I am tracking in each chart. Here, I am going to track the activities of the employee. The first step in this process is to greet the customer. Notice that the step is not customer arrives. We are not tracking the customer. Having listed this step, I further want to categorize this activity into one of five categories. The first category is operation. An operation can be thought of as an activity that adds some value, such as by transforming something. The second category is transportation. This kind of activity involves moving something or someone without actually transforming anything. The next category is inspection. This kind of activity simply inspects something that has already occurred. The next category is delay. This kind of activity involves waiting for something else to happen. The final category is storage. This kind of activity involves setting something aside for a while and then getting back to it later. The inverted triangle can be thought of as a storage bin. In terms of these five categories, greeting the customer can be considered a value-added step or operation. We now want to put down some more information about this step. How much time did this step take? Five seconds. How much distance did the employee move during this step? None. Likewise, we move on to the second step. The customer now looks over the menu. The employee, meanwhile, is idle. Since it is the employee that I'm tracking, the activity here is a delay. This delay takes 20 seconds and involves zero distance. Now the customer is ready to order. The employee's activity involves taking the customer's order, which can be considered an operation. This step takes 10 seconds and involves zero distance. Continuing in a similar manner, the employee verifies the order by repeating it to the customer, informs the customer how much the total is, waits for the customer's payment, accepts payment, walks to the coffee counter, picks up a cup, pours the coffee, picks up the lid, fixes the lid, walks back to the customer, and finally hands over the coffee. Notice here that the process is broken down into pretty detailed level steps. The reason for this level of detail is that we want each step to fit neatly into only one category. If we describe the process in terms of fewer, but larger steps, we are likely to be dealing with composite activities that include a little of this and a little of that. For example, after completing the payment transaction, if we simply proceed to get the coffee, we will really have a composite activity that is made up of walk to coffee, pick up coffee, pour coffee, pick up lid, fix lid, and walk back. Thus, we are combining several transportation and operations activities which means our composite activity will straddle two categories. More importantly, we will have much less information for analyzing the process in detail. Once we have all the information down in our table, we can create a summary. First, we list the five categories. For each category, we summarize the number of steps, the time spent, 
as well as the distance moved. Finally, we calculate the totals. This summary table tells us that only half of our activities, 7 out of 14 steps, are operations. The remaining 7 are not value added but can be considered necessary evils. Moreover, less than half of the total time, only 40 out of 90 seconds, is spent in adding value. As well, our process involves 24 feet of transportation. Looking at this information, Naturally, we would like to altogether eliminate those activities that don't add value. However, such activities often do form a necessary part of our process. But perhaps we can think of ways to minimize them. Likewise, we can also think about ways to minimize the transportation. How about we redesign the layout so that the coffee is placed closer to the cash register? That would reduce the transportation distance as well as the time. Finally, even for activities that can be considered value added, that is the operations activities, there is still room for improving on them. Can we perhaps speed up the process of accepting payment? Have you noticed how a lot of fast food restaurants, grocery stores, etc. no longer bother you for your signature for smaller credit card purchases? That way the process is completed much quicker. As we said earlier, the process chart allows us to document a process with special emphasis on categorizing the activities. Rather than simply stopping with documentation, we can use the information collected to dig deeper and engage in process analysis, which should lead to process improvement.